Welcome to the dark forest Jackie and her pals will never bore us Shameless confessions about our obsession Will make us laugh and smile So let's explore the dark forest And dark down for a while 2023, you guys, and I'm winging it! Hi, it's Jackie Cation. Welcome to the Dork Forest. That's the website, the Dork Forest, if you like a determiner. Dorkforest.com also works. JackieCation.com has all of my stand-up information. Like, it has videos, it has pictures, it has links to this podcast and to my other podcast with Lori Kilmartin. It has a merch store that has Dork Forest t-shirts. It has all of my stand-up merch and all of my CDs and DVDs. So, that's what you know about websites. There's an opportunity because uh, we're in the new year here that you can donate to the Dork Forest. I don't have a Patreon. I don't have uh, anything really set up, though I understand you can set up on PayPal a monthly if you wanted to. Uh, you could donate and uh, be of uh, to support the show. This is the 17th season, the 17th year I've been putting this stuff out. It's free, but if you have money and would like to throw me some money, boy, howdy. Uh, uh, there's a PayPal, the, and there is at my web, at my email address, actually, Jackie at JackieCation.com, which you can also email me and tell me how much you're enjoying the show. You can also do Venmo if you'd like, which is just Jackie Cation. No hyphen, all one word, picture of this, this person, me, and then... Um, I think that's it. I think I have Zell, but it's too complicated. Other than that, let's do the credits. Patrick Brady, still in, fixing the audio all these years later. Give it up to Patrick Brady. That's what a lot of your donations support, by the way, because I like to uh, share the wealth. And then um, Bill Mose, he does the websites. And Mike Rickberg wrote and sang that song composed and sang that song with his wife now, Sarah. And uh, at the end, he sings uh, the Mexican hat dance, which is always fun. Anyway, I'm sure there's more to it. There's a band camp that has a bunch. It has like a, a, a stand-up storytelling album that was never released. It's uh, There's also a, a bunch of live episodes that many of them are free. There were 200 episodes that were not pre-recorded, and I sort of culled through those, and I pulled like 17 of the best ones. There's an album collection of that, 17 Hours of Dork Forest. If you run through all of the episodes, go to bandcamp.com, Dork Forest, or Google those words, and you'll find it. Anyway, there's probably more. I can't remember any of it, but you're doing great. Feel free to enjoy the show. It's me, Jackie Cation. I'm in a, I'm in a hotel room. Very, very glamorous in Sunnyvale, California. Uh, I am speaking with host of Daily Tech News Show. So literally, you were born to do this show, Tom Merritt. Well played. <laughs> well played for wanting to be on the show. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, that was a temporary name for that show that stuck around for about 10 years. So. <laughs> well, the Dork Forest, I don't know. I don't know how I could have come up with something better, but, yeah, uh, no, but I, I didn't I've, know it, what it was. I feel like I've been in this forest my whole life. So thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> sure. I'm glad you didn't get lost. Tom Merritt, you guys, host of the Daily Tech News Show. It's they recorded on Twist, Twitch, and it's at Good Day Internet. He's got he's on Twitter, he's on Instagram, it's on TikTok, at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, at DTNS Pix, P I X on Instagram, and at DTNS Show on Twitter. It'll all be in the notes. Tom Merritt is uh, the gentleman I'm speaking with, and your dorkdom is awesome. It's essentially things that come out of Korea. <laughs> <laughs> like k-pop and korean dramas <laughs> yeah uh we, we, i i could have gone down so many roads that have been gone down before because i'm i'm also a big fan of a bunch of other things star trek lord of the sure. rings and all that stuff but recently in the past couple of years my wife has has gotten us into uh korean dramas it started with the korean dramas okay. uh then k-pop and of course food and, and and all of that and it feels like the the thing that that we the two of us dork out about the most that is uh it's great i usually i've had a couple and i'm not gonna lie to you very young women talk to me about k-pop and um and and the boy bands that 
mm-hmm. are created and sort of that culture. And it does seem like a rabbit hole that you could really, you're like, I'm in, I can commit to this. <laughs> so let's start with the dramas though, because um, I think there was, People keep telling me to watch them and I keep not watching them. Mm. You know, I'm busy. I got, I got, uh, I'm, there's too I've much to down, watch, right? Right. There's an acorn Brit box rabbit hole that I've seemed to have fallen down into and Alice won't let me out. So uh, I've, I've gone mad with, with uh, Brit box power. So what Korean dramas, what kind of started it? Uh, well, when we moved, we were all stressed out from the move and my wife was looking for something to, to watch that was easy. And she found these Chinese dramas at first that kind of led her into the Korean dramas. And the two that really hooked me, uh, were the, my love from the stars, which is about, uh, a guy who is an alien trying to get back home, uh, who falls in love with a, a, an actress, uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> and is it all in Korean with subtitles? Yeah, it's a, these are all in Korean with subtitles. You can find some dubbed more often these days because Netflix is doing them. But back then it was all it was all subtitles. Tom, I, I love your wife. It's like, I'm going to find something light. It's going to have subtitles. <laughs> what this sounds, this doesn't sound like Bridgerton to me. This doesn't sound like all of a sudden. Um, yeah, easy to. I, I mean, I, I don't mind subtitles at all. And um but it's it's kind of fascinating. So is it so my love from the stars? That's is it just sort of a romantic comedy or is it just it a is. romantic drama? That one that one's a romantic comedy. It's it's Neat. it's got some some very light elements to it. Uh, the one that really hooked me though was Hotel Del Luna, okay. which is about uh, a woman from the Joseon era, so like medieval times basically. Okay, who uh, who is a warrior. Uh, and she gets cursed and becomes the owner of a hotel for the dead where they stay before they move on. Uh, And she has to get a human to be the manager of the hotel. Uh, And so at the beginning of the story, the, the person who had been manager is retiring. And so she has to trick this guy into becoming the manager. (laughs) Staffing. It's always about staffing. Yeah. Uh, Interesting to me. (laughs) So, and those are both movies. They're series. They're they're TV series. Yeah. TV series. How many seasons are in the love from the, how many seasons are in each of these? Most Korean dramas just go for one season. Uh, Okay. So these are both just one season long, 16 episodes. uh, 16 one hour, drama, half yes, hour? Uh, hour fifteen. Sometimes they can be kind of okay. long. Yeah, yeah. Good for them. This is. It feels like its own kind of genre where they're mm. like, that's going to last as long as the story lasts. And, yeah, uh, and there's going to be sixteen of them, and then we're going to be done with it. Yeah. Is there it, a good arc to it? Does it? Could there be a second season? Well, they leave you with a cliffhanger as if you're going to get a second season. Yes. Uh, so, so they show you a new person at the very end. I, I no, no more spoilers than that. But, right, right. Uh, and it's it's a person who is hilariously being played in that one brief scene by the star of My Love from the Star. So I think oh, okay. that was one of the things that got me. I was like, hey, I know that guy. <laughs> he was in the thing, other thing I watched. <laughs> that's uh, that's awesome so if it's and both of these have 16 episodes and they're an hour ish right, yeah. mm-hmm. and um and are they are they all like could you binge not that i actually recommend such a thing it just it it gets i mean i i tend i i say that i'm reading the ninth book in a series that i can't seem <laughs> to stop reading so uh but yes so you could yeah, yeah. Well, in fact, Hotel Del Luna, we definitely did. Uh, we it was uh, right before, like twenty nineteen, uh, and so it became just oh. kind of a thing we were watching regularly. It wasn't it wasn't twenty twenty era when everybody was binging everything, but we still binged it. Oh, right, right. And um, and and so the Hotel Del Luna did that. Was that a drama too, or is, did it was it kind of a dramedy? It sounds like it, it could have some humor. It was a little more serious than my love from the star stars. Uh, but yeah, it has some, some good humor. Uh, the main w- woman who plays the, the hotel owner is a, a very famous singer in Korea, uh, who wow. goes under the name IU and she's just very, very practical and kind of mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's just what kind, streaming kind of service. 
it was originally on Viki, which is okay. a service that has a bunch of Asian dramas, Chinese, Japanese. Okay. Korean. How are you spelling Viki? Is it V-I-C-K-I-E? I think it's just K's, but let me see how many there are. Uh, okay. It, yeah, it's one K, V-I-K-I. Okay. But the Hotel Del Luna is on Netflix now. Oh, fun. Okay. That is kind of fascinating. I think uh, my fella would enjoy such a thing. Um, what I just, and so the actors, they're different casts. I mean, it's, and th these are South Korean, clearly, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yep. And um, the, uh, because South Korea is full of people and they're full of, uh, full of actors. So this is, there's plenty of work here. And oh, yeah. And, yeah. and you'll you'll see some of the the bigger actors move from show to show. Uh, <laughs> one of one of the big dramas that usually people recommend if you're if you're interested in starting is called Goblin, uh, and the stars of of that. Uh, there's two main male leads and and a female lead. Uh, that whenever they're in anything, it's promoted as like so and so from Goblin is is oh, okay. That. Yeah, yeah. And what was, did you see Goblin? Did you I did, watch I did. Uh, <laughs> Goblin, Goblin's great. I got into it later. My wife watched it alone and I was kind of watching it in the peripheral, uh, periphery and, and then decided I had to watch it on my own. But it is about uh, a goblin who, so he looks like a human, but he is someone who is immortal. Uh, okay. And he can only die if he meets his goblin bride. Oh my gosh. So, okay. So he he's tired of, of life because he's immortal. <laughs> he's been there forever. Uh, and, and he, he just can't, he can't meet his goblin bride. And, and he, he meets this girl who's like a senior in high school. And th th there's a whole thing about how you tell who the goblin bride is. And he's like, Oh wait, no, this is the goblin bride. Like I can't, this can't be the goblin bride. She's a high school kid. Right. right and so right. the series is like him waiting for her to grow up so she can kill him. <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't know and then she finds out uh, <laughs> okay now i'm in love with uh yeah. with korean because the writing on this stuff is the premises are great right and yeah i left out the best part is the goblin's roommate is the grim reaper oh my god and what is that <laughs> streaming on uh that yeah, ooh, that's a good find that one it. moves around i think it's definitely yeah. on vicky Okay, uh, but I I'll, I'll do a quick uh, search. B I K I. B I K I. Yeah. And um, yeah. This is this is a world. This is a world I've never heard of. And I mean, when I think Korean, first of all, I think Yukai Jang. I think food. Mm, and then yeah. and then I think uh, K-pop. And then um, I don't know who did. And this is uh. I am sorry to uh, combine several billion people's uh, cinema all into one, but who did Squid Games? Right, Where did that, that come from? That is a Korean show that, it's that also Netflix a funded. Show. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I saw the first one of that, and I realized that it was uh, essentially a gratuitous snuff film, and I didn't want any part of it because it's not for me. <laughs> it was it was considered incredibly violent for a Korean show. Like there oh. there there will have violence, but they usually don't show it. In okay. My experience anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you have seen clearly if you can name off the top of your head three. <laughs> and then I also was sent a list of five more uh, shows. I think are, I don't know if these are K pop fans. Some of, yeah. Some of the list are not, are, are not shows. There's two, there's a couple of shows on there though. Okay. And uh, yeah, because I thought that Squid Games, uh, I thought it had a nice edge of, of, of comedy to it. Mm hmm. And it had a, um, and it was kind of, I, the production values on it were great, but I just, I couldn't, I was like, oh no, this is this, uh, dis, you know, this dystopian present that we're living in. Yeah. I can't possibly watch. <laughs> it was too close I, to home. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm good. I don't need to, <laughs> dystopian yeah, yeah. present isn't my jam. But if I so, can, if I could ask you a question, cause I'm not sure if it's in the first episode, did you see them play a game in the subway station? Um, or was that in a later episode? I feel like there was an introduction of a game. Like where he's like, okay, he's got a briefcase. He's in the subway station, and he like, I get to slap you if you lose. That was the premise. Oh, does that strike ring a bell? That does, though. I don't know. Okay, the only reason I bring it up is the yeah. guy who was doing the game 
mm-hmm. that, that was doing the slapping is the the goblin from Goblin. <laughs> Right. Finally, that guy still getting some work. Yeah, Um, that is amazing. I have to say that I do like I liked that it was about games just because games are in my life a lot. And so whenever there's a game, I'm like, so what's the premise of the game? Mm -hmm, And so mm -hmm. you're like, okay, so you can move. You can't move. You move. You can't move. And then that was I mean, I I don't even know. I think it might have been one of those. I don't know if you ever get into this situation where you're supposed to watch a tv show so you just read the synopses Uh, but i do Uh i get in that situation and so that's what i think i did with squid games where i was Uh like i just read the synopses and um i also did it with watchmen uh the watchmen oh really because i watched the first episode uh was overwhelmed and then uh (laughs) because i i tension is not my friend uh, so yeah. I I don't I, I I'm not there for it. And so I watched other episodes of The Watchmen from like the doorway while Andy watched it. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. And then I would kind of do laps and then I just would read and then I watched the last episode and with him. But um these it sounds like you do kind of like like a weird premise, but it isn't necessarily like it isn't because even Mad Max, I can watch Mad Max because that's just it's a it's a horrible futuristic world, but it's not there's no tension there. Yeah, it's very car- cartoonish in a, in a way, right. in a good way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. So, um, do you are do some of them get super dark like that? Yeah, there there are some. There there's one that's called I think it's DK if I'm remembering the name right that is about draft dodgers. Uh, and, oh, it's, okay. and it's, it's really serious and, and very, you know, gritty. It's not quite as graphic as squid game, uh, right. but it's definitely like full of tension. You'd hate it. Right. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it that's would all be it is. I'm yeah. glad you've really gotten to know me in these first four, <laughs> 14 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so, um, is there, this is so great. So, and, and they all are about an hour and they seem to be dramas or dramedies or comedies yeah there's a lot of romantic comedies uh okay. the, one of the big ones last year was called business proposal uh which probably isn't going to sound as good in the pitch as it was in reality because it was the way they did it with okay. lots of little like funny funny lines funny writing funny situations uh but essentially a a woman uh agrees to pretend to be her friend on a on a date that has been set up by her rich mom uh so so the friend is rich right she oh, agrees okay. to go on this date and just try to be awful uh to this oh, to, guy s- to push the guy away right to push the guy away she doesn't know that he uh is a ceo of a of a big company and his f- grandfather is saying he has to get married or he's not going to, you know, inherit the company or whatever. Uh, sure. And so I he's, read romance novels. Yes. he's motivated not to let the date be bad. And the twist is that it's the CEO of her company, the woman who's pretending to be the friend. And that's another series. And that's that's the series business proposal. I can't yeah. tell you how much that has me written all over it. It's this... really funny. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah. Why don't we just end it here? And now I have to go watch. Television. <laughs> so yeah. this is a, this is. This I is haven't awesome. even got. I haven't even got to crash landing on you, which is uh, a female CEO is testing her paraglider and accidentally lands in North Korea and falls in love with a North Korean guard. Oh my God. Uh, that. Okay. Um, <laughs> And is and for some reason neither starves to death nor is murdered. No, because um, they everyone helps her because they feel right. bad. She oh, she right, isn't right. meant to be there. Yeah. Oh, and they hide her and they yeah, and they yeah. they try the to summer pass of her German off as a soldier. villager and yeah. sure yeah. sure I read the summer of my German soldier. Mm-hmm. I know it's happening. Yeah yeah. Um, wow. Okay. Um, what? Yes. What else you got? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm just making a list of things. And it's interesting because they're all subtitled, which um, I told you I was okay with. But I am, to some extent, uh, a, a liar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but once I start watching something that's subtitled, I'm, I'm in. It's only, and a lot of the Netflix ones will be dubbed, so you can always check to see. Uh, and I know, that, but... That helps. 
I know that the show is the dork forest, but there it's when you own that dorkdom, you kind of want to watch them sometimes. You want to go. Yeah. You want to get them in however poorly or well done that translation was done with the writing. And hear and, the tone of voice and everything. Yeah, from, yeah. right. The real actors yeah, with the yeah. real voices and stuff. I know the the Miyazaki cartoons. Like I really did like Ponyo, um, but Tina Fey as the mom was a little distracting because you knew. So her. yeah, I, yeah, I know the yeah. voice, and I'm just like, okay, all right. Mm-hmm. This seems mm-hmm. unlikely that she would leave her child for three <laughs> days during a flood to yeah. go help the old elderly. Okay. Uh, and then a fish comes to life. Is there, um, I, I like the mix of science fiction and then it can be. So what we have so far is one, two, three, five shows that people could watch. And, and none of them are on the list. I you. <laughs> and none of them are on the list. What's one, what's kimchi. Oh, kimchi jjigae is a food. That's 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 oh. one of my favorite Korean foods. Uh, it's it's like a kimchi stew. Oh, is it just rice and kimchi to some it's, extent? It's not even rice. It's just uh, it's kimchi and tofu, and you could put pork in there, and uh, it's it, you eat well, it, it with sounds, rice on the side. It uh, sounds delicious. It. Yeah, yeah. It's, I had it last night actually. Oh wow! So did you did you end up getting into Korean food because of the Korean television? more or into did you it always for just sure. like more into it yeah i was definitely the person who was like oh yeah i, I go to korean barbecue i get bulgogi and and stuff like that but then yeah once you start seeing the shows you see them eating other things and you're like wait a minute what's that uh <laughs> and i'm lucky enough to live in los angeles which has koreatown where you yeah. can actually find almost all of that stuff that uh, is amazing so yeah i ventured out quite a bit do you have a couple of favorite you know that i live in los angeles and um, i'm sad that i'm not there uh because as much as i like sunnyvale and i went to a place today for lunch just now that claimed to be indian Mm. and it must have been pakistani like oh because it was middle eastern Uh uh-huh and it was there but it was full of indian people huh and it was delicious yeah but it was not what i usually thought of as indian so i think it was northern indian Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Leading into Pakistan or Bangladesh, mm. and um, which I was reminded of because I just watched the Ms. Marvel series, uh-huh. and I was reminded of the partitioning. So, uh, right, but, right. um, but do you have a couple of favorite uh, Korean restaurants in, I... or do you just tend to just you're like look for the food and then go to it and go? There's a a great one that's. I, I would call it Encino, but I think it's technically Van Nuys. Um, what? It's on the other side of the 405 uh, called Evergreen. That's fantastic. It's my go-to. Um, Do you know that I live in Van Nuys, which I explained I think I read that somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's like living in Hanoi in 1974. They hmm. have a lot of helicopters, but uh, everyone means well. <laughs> I live in occupied Van Nuys. Do you know, do you know the part that like declared itself Sherman Oaks in 2008? That's, that's where I live. Uh, that is fancy. So what's, what are the big cross streets that Evergreen is on? Uh, or near? It, it, it's, it's near, uh, I want to say victory. I would have to look it up. Exactly. Oh, sort of. So it's a little bit North. So victory. Yeah. Yeah. And then is it, is it by Sepulveda or is it by Van Nuys it's, or Hazeltine it's, you, or what? You cross the 405 going West. Oh, so you're, oh towards Encino. Yeah. You're going yeah, victory like that Haskell way. Haskell or Balboa. Or That's White why Oak. I'm like, I would yeah. call it Encino or Balboa, but, but the yeah. address is listed as Van Nuys somehow. And I'm not sure why. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I get home on Monday. Anyway, uh, I love Korean food. It is uh, some of my favorite food. So that's kind of exciting. I used to go to a place on, it was on Sherman Way and White Oak. And there is a um, a Korean grocery there that's still very good. But um, the restaurant itself has turned itself into a grocery store and cell phone, uh, uh-huh. cell phone place. And the Korean place that was pretty good that was right by my house, which is Sherman Way and Van Nuys Boulevard, has turned itself into a um, a dump a Korean dumpling pl- house and pinball. Ah, uh, okay. It, it so this 40. is on Sherman Way. Yeah. Sherman Way. The the Evergreen Restaurant is on Sherman Way. Oh, is it? It's Sherman Way and White Oak. Wait, that that's wait. Did Evergreen, which used to be, is it in that mall? It's it's in a little shopping center uh, next to TJ, which I've never been to. And there's the the green the uh, green 
land market. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it new? Because that used to be my go-to, my favorite place. This place um, looks like it's been there forever. It's not the only one there. And it looks okay. like there's a couple others that have remodeled recently. So I'm okay. wondering if it's just like First next floor. door to the one you're talking hey, about. Hey, Rangers, yeah. uh, Tom Merritt and I are just discussing Van Nuys now. And uh, <laughs> so is it... Uh, <laughs> Is it on the first floor or the second floor? It's on the first floor, yeah. But okay. it's in the corner. It's like you wouldn't yeah. really, if you didn't know to look for it, you probably wouldn't go in. Right, because uh, when I drive in, to the left is the grocery, and right? to the right is the is the restaurant I used to go to. It's sort of down the way mm -hmm. on the right. I bet you. I bet I you. I think it's the, probably right next door to the one you're talking about. All right. Well, this is exciting for me, and uh, and I wonder, do they have that kimchi there? That that stew. They don't have kimchi jjigae. They have twin jung jjigae though, uh, which is What's like, it's it's just the same thing with, but with um, miso kind of soy stuff instead of kimchi. Oh, okay. There's a more savory instead of spicy. That is interesting. Um, I'm sorry. I'm looking at your list and I see something called Reborn Rich. Oh yeah. Okay. Back to what shows. What is that? Then. Back to uh, shows. This is this'll, the one. This will be more compelling, you guys. <laughs> Reborn riches. If if you are following anything Korean, like if you're seeing interviews with uh, musicians, K-pop groups, uh, t other TV stars, and they're asked what they're watching, they will all mention Reborn Rich. It just stopped uh, airing a month or so ago, uh, and it's about a guy who is sort of like the ultimate assistant for this like ultra rich, ultra awful uh, head of family that that's in charge of one of those like big Chabal uh, companies, right? The, okay. the, it's it's not Samsung or LG, but it's like you kind of get the idea. Oh, it, that it's so, Samsung or LG. We can't name them, yeah. but it's like that, right? Yeah. So he gets murdered in the first episode, okay. but is reborn into the body of one of the sons of the family in the 70s oh <laughs> weird wait a minute so <laughs> it starts current time yeah it's it starts now like you know 2022 uh and then that's and then, the weirdest greatest premise in the they're just like time is ridiculous and Who so he, he wakes up and he's in the body of this like seven-year-old boy suddenly uh and when he gets his awareness uh and he's meeting the 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 grandfather who founded the company who had been dead when he was alive uh and right. he's like now he's like dedicated his life to solving his own murder before it happens <laughs> right and so how many there's if there's 16 episodes does it span the 50 years from the yeah, 70s yeah. to no, 20? No, there's, there's a bunch of time jumps where you'll like, you'll okay. see him in his teen years. And they do lots of fun stuff where like, he very clearly knows what's going to happen. So he's like, I think you probably should invest in Apple, you know, stuff uh, like that. Yeah. Right. Oh, right, right. The Always the fun getting in on the ground floor of plastics right, right. kind of thing. Yes. Um, it's wonderful. And he, he, he impresses his love interest uh, by promising that one of her favorite K-pop groups that breaks up in the 90s will get back together because he knows they will. <laughs> This so he's using his powers for good and also right? yeah yeah, yeah, yeah he's and, just and for to himself get, <laughs> yeah. and for himself just in in the hopes of like well I just have a feeling that they'll get back together don't be sad yeah he and, no he pri he guarantees it right because he knows yeah. yes because he knows and uh, so he's not trying to mess with time just uh, just well, his family is that's that's the interesting thing is that he knows what's going to happen so he takes advantage of that he's positioning himself to take down the family and get revenge but also solve his murder and then he has as he gets closer and closer in age to that time he starts to cross paths with himself right. and then starts to wonder like am, am i able to change things or not and it would be spoiler to go too far down that road about what he learns but yeah again, he, one season Mm -hmm. 16 ish episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Seriously. I have to get off of this call. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, that sounds awesome as well. Um, okay. What else you got? Uh, the other one I, I gave you on the list to watch is called 2521. Yeah. Which, uh, I think is just one of the best 
coming coming of age stories I've ever seen at all. Because on the on the premise of it is uh, there's a, a young girl in high school who wants to be a fencer. It's at the time of the IMF crisis. So it's like the entire country is going broke. They're asking people to like s turn gold into the country to help it pay, pay its bills. Uh, and so she meets a, f a son of a formerly rich family whose father is on the run for, from debtors, uh, who's like trying to rebuild himself from the ground up, but he's four years older than her. Okay. Uh, and so the, it doesn't have that compelling, you know, premise that I can throw out of like, you know, and and then aliens land or anything like right, that. Right. It's it's just a story over the course of I'd say I think ten years, eh, okay. maybe less than ten years, but but of like their relationship and and becoming friends and what what it means to to know someone when you're young. I guess the one twist is the story is framed with that same girl grown up and her daughter is in high school uh, and is like discovering her diaries and reading about this. Okay. And yeah. what I love about it is that all of those things where you're like, oh, here comes the trope, they don't do. And they, and the thing you're like, you know, what I would do in this situation is really X, they do that. <laughs> and I, I was constantly like, oh, that's much better. Oh, that's real. And I, again, don't want to spoil the ending, but I felt like the ending was so much more true to life experience than the, yeah. the you know, like the nice pat happy ending you usually get. I think it's one of the most like complexly told stories of human relationships that I've ever seen. Oh, that's outstanding. This is, this is, um, I don't know how I'm going to switch over from Acorn and BritBox to this, but it has I to know, happen. I know, because you got like Death in Paradise over there, which is really good. Well, there's always, I don't know if you know this about the British, but they have to go to other people's countries and solve yeah. their tiny murders. <laughs> yeah, that uh, island. I would never <laughs> move there. So well, try people. going to the south of France with Madame Blanc. Oh, yeah. No, or dangerous. you could go You could go to Italy with uh, Signora Volpe. Right. Anyway, right. well, I'm just telling you, they just got to go different places. <laughs> there's got to be a, a constable. <laughs> Somewhere and someone that will die. Someone will always die, and um, and there's good times to be good times to be had. But uh, this sounds this is so great. <laughs> um, okay, so so there's what's La Seraphim? La Seraphim. La Seraphim. Uh, that that is the one K-pop group that I threw on there. Uh, and Run BTS. Run BTS is a show by the group BTS. Uh, so oh, and I, BTS is the band. I can tell. Yeah, I can tell this all in in one story. Okay. During during lockdown, uh, mm -hmm. my wife uh, discovered BTS. We we knew of them before. She was she even listened to them sometimes. So I kind of knew a couple of the songs. But the song Dynamite came out. Uh, that's, no. That's one that, <laughs> but yeah, okay. Yeah. That's so that's that was one the that famous one. Yeah, that's one that hit number one on Billboard and stuff. Uh, she got really into that and started going down the rabbit hole of learning everything about the group. Uh, and she started watching their variety show called Run BTS okay. on the weekends. I would sit down and I'd watch it with her and it'd be mm -hmm. like, yeah, okay, you can watch your show and I'll do my thing. I kept getting sucked in. I was like, these guys are hilarious. And so it really drew me in to becoming right. interested in, in the group and their music's great too. And I, I came to learn that for a while. My joke was like, oh yeah, BTS, I love their show. I heard they're really good singers too. <laughs> now uh, with K-pop, are they, I haven't done an episode about K-pop in a couple of years. So um, they're usually four or five members, right? And they all have oh, yeah. different can, roles. It can be all over the place. Uh, BTS has seven members. Okay. Uh, and yeah, there's, there's three that rap. Uh, there's four that are considered vocalists. Uh, and then one of them is also kind of the dance lead. Another one was trained in ballet. And so they're kind of the, the dance leaders, but then the youngest is kind of good at everything. Uh, so they're not rigid roles. Some, some groups have more rigid roles than others. So, um, the only music I've heard here with this discussion seems to be the singers who's playing the instruments. Yeah, they usually do session musician. They do they okay. do backup, the backup. musician. Uh, okay. they, there are exceptions. There's a group called Rose uh, where they play their own their play their own music, but usually the focus is on dancing. So they have they have musicians playing behind right. them, and they do the singing and the dancing and the rapping and all that. Oh, great! And um, and so 
and the, and is it is K-pop mostly dance music? Is it stuff that the the clubs would play just to? I think it still probably mostly is, but I, what I've found that's so interesting is it ranges around. Uh, there's there's a lot of different stuff. A lot of the earlier BTS stuff is really like hip hop, like what, which which is also kind of dance music, you know, broadly yeah. speaking. But uh, and then they get into more ballads and and stuff later on. So it's not always club dance music, but okay. Uh, but it's but, got a good beat. Yeah. The kids could dance to it if they wanted to. Yeah. Not, a, not a roller skate backwards kind of thing. And there's moment. lots of different genres uh, that, that come out of it, too. But, you know, some singer songwriter stuff, some some more uh, some more rock and roll type stuff. Uh, okay. One of the guys in 17 just did a solo song that's like you'd think it was just like an indie 90s song if you didn't know anything else about it. OK. All right. Um, so the Sursa film. <laughs> yes, Le Seraphim, which Seraphim. they picked because Sorry it's an that. it's an anagram for I'm fearless. Who doesn't want an anagram? Right. Uh, all of a sudden, it's anagram talk, you guys. Let's and then hear it. Seraphim is like the angels, the Seraphim. Oh so, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they are on the. They're out of the same company as BTS. So when they launched, I sort of because we were you know following what BTS did, we paid attention uh to that and 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 i i just i was watching them i was like i like their music and then they started doing uh a show uh called day off uh where they just were given a day in a hotel <laughs> to just do whatever they wanted uh but and, they had to hang out together yeah it was it was the <laughs> the five of them together uh and they were hilarious and i was like okay i'm getting run bts vibes off of this so i started getting interested in them and they do all this kind of video stuff that they're just they're interesting folks they're also very talented uh one of them is an actual ballerina that they recruited she's japanese but she had been in the netherlands and they recruited her to come to korea to join the group um and, and okay. so there's just there's interesting stories behind all of them and I, I think that's one of the things that people don't realize about k-pop is they think oh it's you know you're in high school and, and you have a you have like a teen idol crush like a teen b yeah. magazine that's definitely part of it okay. but there are also all of these stories that they tell and these videos that did do some groups you know do better ones than others but it becomes a whole like a, a whole little mini world that that you can get interested in the way you would get interested in the characters in lord of the rings or game of thrones or anything else okay so is it but is it kind of reality show but not but but like because well you keep saying that they're hilarious and and then there's backstories so let's look at um the one that you which one do you know better bts uh, BTS and La Seraphim. BTS has yeah. been around longer, uh, so I will probably get in trouble with ARMY uh, for getting things wrong, but I do know more about them, whereas La right. Seraphim has only been around for less than a year. So and I, know in your hearts, anybody who's into K-pop, it's just enthusiasm. It may not be entirely <laughs> correct, but you know what? If you do need to have a longer discussion about this, please contact Tom Merritt. Uh, in uh at the daily tech news show uh good day internet on twitch dtns show on twitter dtns picks pix on instagram and daily tech news show on tiktok and then you could say well you actually he's actually five foot seven yeah, yeah. and <laughs> uh and don't sweat it so but about bts is it um because there's always like a bad boy and then there's a a clean cut guy, like there's different roles that they sort of play, right? Yeah. I, I think what BTS did that sort of changed the the genre a bit was they they leaned into their actual personalities instead of creating personas. In the earlier oh. days, they were still doing a little more persona, which had been traditional. Uh, but they 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 tried to just be like, you know what, you're you're just who you are. And La Seraphim actually totally does that. They don't even have stage names. Whereas oh. BTS you know, there's a guy named Suga who's one of the rappers. His real name's Min Yoongi. La Seraphim, they're all just going by their their real names. But BTS oh. kind of changed that by saying, "Well, let, let, let's show you what they actually do. Let's let's let them complain about their day being hard." You know, right? And, let and, let them be human. Yeah, and that's got to be kind of more. I would I would find that more compelling than these sort of, you know, they have to each be ninja turtles, right? I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, so that's cool. So what 
what are their backstories or what are their what what are they what are the, some fun things that you know about sure BTS? sure um, why do, well and not and, why do you know you know because you got sucked in there there do you know about having a bias in in uh in in k-pop i only know about it when you're using a saw uh, <laughs> so, so no <laughs> it's a little different than that uh the, the idea is that, that you never want to have a favorite. You love them all, right? Sure. Uh, but you might be biased towards one. So people will oh. pick their bias. Okay. And then their, your second would be your bias wrecker. So there's your bias and your wrecker. <laughs> like R-E-W-R-E-C-K-E-R? Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. like they're my bias, but this one sometimes does thing that wrecks that because, you know. Because they're my yeah. second fit. Okay. Right, right. So my bias is, is sugar because he's just such a good rapper i he also his his demeanor reminds me of a friend of mine he's just kind of grumpy but not really okay, right uh you know and he sleeps he might a just lot have resting grump face yeah yeah he's just he's he doesn't talk as much as the others so he's a little more like mm, yeah, mm. Uh, <laughs> but he's like super smart huge hell of a work ethic the the thing about yoongi is that he's always producing he just loves music uh he's produced a bunch of songs for other k-pop artists outside of bts uh and and so i i admire that work ethic uh and so yeah he's the he's the sort of the nose to the grindstone very practical you know got a sense of humor but it's very dry kind of guy okay how old are these people uh they're all in their late 20s um okay yeah Jin is the oldest and i think he's actually 30 now and he just went into the military uh because okay. they all have to do their mandatory military service and they have to do it when they're 30 they don't have to do they it, have when to they're do it before they're 30. okay uh, but they could the push latest it. they could possibly do it yeah, okay yeah. so he pushed it as far as he, he pushed could it and... as far as he could yeah. okay and so who's your bias wrecker uh that would be rm kim namjoon uh mm -hmm. he is also a rapper he's the leader mm -hmm. uh so they'll they'll pick a leader who will be the person sort of you know leads the front any, man any, or yeah, yeah it's not necessarily the front man in the sense of singing or anything but but sort of in interviews you know he will introduce the the group and and all of okay. that okay yeah uh he speaks the best english he learned from watching friends <laughs> <laughs> oh man after my own heart yeah uh, <laughs> uh and he's 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 the bookworm uh, he's, he's okay. the guy who loves to read. He loves art. Uh, and, and so he's, he's, he actually just finished a stint on a show, uh, that was all of like an astrophysicist and a philosopher and a nuclear engineer. It's this long running series where they just bring really smart people together. And he was one of the co-hosts of that because he loves talking and thinking and stuff like that. Right, right, right. So he, he could, he was like, look at, look at these scientists and these smarty magoos that I could talk yeah, to. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and then there's three other, three other people in it. No, wait, there's, BTS has seven, right? They, yeah. There's five others. Yeah. Right. Are there any women? No, this, that's, there are a few, uh, mixed groups, uh, like that. Uh, but they're, they're few and far between. It's usually either all one or all the other. Okay. And are there like, what's a, I mean, you don't have to be into them, but I'm just curious. What's a famous women's K-pop group. Probably the most famous one is Blackpink. Blackpink. All yeah. right. Um, that's they're, they're four four members of Blackpink. Uh, Lisa is my bias in Blackpink. Okay, and uh, <laughs> and your wife does she have a bias a different bias a bias yes. record or same? Yeah, no? for B for BTS her bias is Jungkook, uh, which uh, she has told me flat out uh, she picked him because of his looks. But <laughs> he's yeah. he's the youngest in the group, uh, and he's good at everything. He's the oh, guy he's the who's young, like, good, yeah, good at yeah. everything guy. Yeah. Okay. Um, are they athletic too? Cause they're some of, some are, some aren't, um, mm -hmm. Jungkook is very athletic. Um, some of them didn't used to be RM has become more athletic, uh, you know, and, and working on things like that. And then V, uh, who is, is one who apparently just doesn't ever want to work out. So he doesn't. <laughs> He's like, I have to go. What are you going to, yeah. it was, um, I was at a comedy show the other night and one of the comics was, um, Marilyn Rice Cup talking about how she, um, she was talking about hiking with her neighbors and how annoying it was occasionally because the two, they hike differently. Ah. And, uh, one 
tends to just want to go for a walk and the other one wants to go over like seven hills in Los Angeles and she'll do both, but uh, she doesn't want to discuss the other with the other. Uh. And she said, you know how hiking is weird. And I was sitting next to Aaron Jackson, another great, a great comic, New York comic who's in LA right now. And without looking at each other and not knowing that she was going to say it, we both went, no, uh, cause we're not hikers is what uh, is what the, yeah. uh, the crux mm-hmm, of that is. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. there you go. Yeah. Um, okay. I like to imagine hiking. I, I think about it. I think yeah. about, I like to walk. I walk, I walk the, the dog. Dogs. There you go. Yep. <laughs> and exactly. And, <laughs> and I like walking the dog. It's fun. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, so, all right. So weirdly enough, I think we're through your list, which is weird. Um, what, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, you're right. I, I was just mentally going over it in my head. I think we we ticked off all all five because I gave you a food, uh, a, a a reality show, a group, and two dramas. Let's go back to the food because here's right. the thing: Korean barbecue. I don't like it. Mm. I don't dislike it. Yeah, but I don't want to cook my own food when I go out to eat. I want someone to bring me my food. I, yeah. I'm paying for it. That's part of the, I feel like that's part of the service. Please make the food for me. Uh, but, but I understand that it is a social thing that if, but someone is always speaking of a leader, someone is always in charge of making sure that the food is cooked. Uh, and it, and it sometimes is me and I don't like it, but uh, the, but my favorite thing in Korean cuisine is a spicy beef soup, mm. shredded beef with vegetable and it is uh, my I don't have good Korean because I call it Yukai Jang, Y U K A I J A N G. Yeah, that's pretty close. Uh, yeah. I, it's not like I speak it. <laughs> either, right, so, you just yeah. happen to be around it more. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, and so that is my favorite because it's so spicy that I I believe, and I've done my own research. It could cure COVID. <laughs> so I think it Did could. It? <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie, kimchi jjigae. Uh, I it definitely cured my COVID. Like the one time I got it, I yeah. was ordering the kimchi jjigae uh, from this place, and I felt better immediately. So I think well, you're on to something because it's I spicy think the, too. The spicy, the spices that are used in Korean in in Korean soups are literally, I believe, preventative medicine and able to cure things. Do you know about uh, hangover soup? I don't. What's hangover soup? Uh, it's uh, hejungguk. Uh, it's uh, a soup that? that you eat as a hangover cure. Just hangover soup is all you have to to remember. Okay, because um, they, they will they they will follow through. Yeah, is it also usually, spicy? Um, it there are different kinds uh, mm-hmm. of it. Uh, it's can be spicy, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, but it's it's generally got like a hearty broth with a lot of meat and vegetables. There are even vegetarian versions of it too. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's meant to just kind of restore you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would also like to go out for Korean food now. Um, <laughs> the, I did do I did do an episode a little while ago, and there was about Kore- just Korean food specifically, and uh, we went out for Korean food after the recording, and it was delightful. And I need to get, get in touch with that. I think her name was Amanda. Ugh, it's all a blur. It's a blur, Tom Merritt. I know. Um, I know how it goes. Mm-hmm. What else we should, I mean, we have about 10 minutes, 15 minutes left. Is there anything that you think like, so people could go and is, I mean, do you subscribe to Vicky? Yeah, we do. We, and we, is we it subscribe a, to another $7 a month, like everything else? Uh, I can't remember what it is. There is a free tier. It was one of the earliest, one of those streaming services to have a tier that was free with ads that you didn't have to pay for. Okay. Um, and then usually if it's a show that is really popular, it won't come to the free tier until, you know, maybe a month or so after it airs. So you oh, can you get them as they come out if you pay a little bit. Uh, some things stay on the the premium tier, uh, and and so you'd have to pay to get. But but we watch enough of them that it was worth paying. But yeah, I, I think it's around like five seven ninety nine something like that. Right, right. It's another five to ten dollars. Yeah, month, yeah. Because yeah. that's what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. And uh, <laughs> that's and then some of them you said were on Netflix. So there's um, one I think you might want to check out uh, that yeah. I didn't mention called Uncanny Counter. Oh, Uncanny. Which, 
in, yeah. And then counter as in a as in a noodle counter because okay. it's people with superpowers running a noodle shop to hide their identity. <laughs> I like you're like, well, why wouldn't I use my superpowers to 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 run a noodle shop? I once read uh, an art uh, and why I dig. Well, we have time. Uh, there is a there was a science fiction book that I read about um, being tele to, uh, the the creation of uh, telepathy, mm. and the this guy is fleeing. This, these government operates, operatives who want to capture him and use it for um, for spying on people and for and and to use it in military intelligence, government uh, shenanigans. And he ends up running into this guy and falling in love with him. And the guy's a, a, a doctor and a pediatrician. And he finally tells him that he's he's telepathic. And the pediatrician goes, just think of the the things we could do with that. And he's like, Okay, you're creeping me out because that's what they want. And he was like, you could you could find out why babies were were hurting, and he was like, oh, I've never nobody's ever thought of that. He was like, yeah, I'm I'm a different hammer, mm. and uh, you know it's just you know it like you just have to it's a different angle, and that's what I kind of like about all these Korean shows is that yeah. there's a there's a different angle being used. I've got two more I can throw throw at you if you want. What? Yes, please. Right. Uh, First is Mr. Queen. Mr. Queen. Mr. Queen uh, okay. is a, a a kind of a bro celebrity chef <laughs> who very quickly in the first episode uh, gets pushed off a balcony by someone and wakes <laughs> up in the body of a of a medieval era woman who is about to be married to the emperor. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> There's, I, you know, I do enjoy the reincarnation angles of a couple of these. Um, yeah. And so uh, then he has to live as a woman. So he, about yeah, to be first of all, he's this like real bro chef who has yeah. to live in a woman. Also, he, ha- he live as a woman, but also he has to live in a time without electricity or TV or cars or anything. Uh, <laughs> and and he's, he's like, was he a gastro chef? Was he a gastro oh, yeah. chef? Yeah, he was. And so he he's inventing all these foods. He's like, do you have potatoes? They're like, what are potatoes? You know, there's like all this stuff. So he's like inventing stuff and he, he creates ramen uh, <laughs> for them. Uh, and, and so there and, but that's the that's just one corner of it. Like there's there's all the things you would expect that he's like, I can't I can't live like this. You know, there's so much right. protocol and, and you know, mm-hmm. and. It and turns he, out being a woman can suck. Yeah, especially <laughs> in that era, and right? It's a tiny box that we need you to fit in. Yeah. I was I was thinking about how like men are encouraged to make their lives and it and it's intimidating. They have to make their lives these big adventures and you're supposed to go out and discover things and be this adventurer and be this big thing. Yeah. While women are not allowed to do that. And so if like try to figure out how to make their lives as small as possible so that they can control it and so that they aren't being you know they're being compressed into this tiny space and so that's uh that's a fascinating that is a great way to think about it too especially in in the 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 context of the show because he he is compressed into literally into a tiny space he's in a tinier person right yeah in a tinier world with more Mm -hmm. restrictions It, it works on a lot of levels that's really good yeah and and it's i mean and it's there's there's trouble in both places, right? With with men having to ha, being forced to be these bigger, you know, and right. and because if you aren't that guy, right, you don't want to do that. And Can the, I uh, just the emperor that that he is supposed to marry uh, is uh, is is facing that side of it, right? Of like having all of the pressures and expectations and and things. Because uh, I think at the beginning of the story, he's not yet emperor. He's just the heir, maybe, or something okay. like that. But there's an element to the story that's that, too. Where the emperor himself has to figure out how to yeah. be an emperor. And, and is kind and, of and impressed the chef. Yeah. By, by Mr. Queen, who yeah. he thinks is a woman, but doesn't, you know, act like the normal uh, no, the, no, the was raised. stereotype of the day. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Lori Kilmartin has a very funny joke about the, one of the greatest things about trans women is that they are women who know what we all should be getting paid. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's good. So. <laughs> uh, the other one uh, that I was going to mention is called Itaewon class. 
Uh, Itaewon is a is a kind of an international district in Seoul. Okay. Uh, and it's the story of a guy who's father worked all his life for this big chain of pubs in okay. Korea. Uh, and then it, he dies and it's kind of the pub's fault, but they just tell him to hush up. He won't hush up. Uh, he has a run in with the pub owner's son. Uh, and really the pub owner's son is at fault, but they frame him and he gets sent to prison. So when he comes out of prison, he decides to create a pub to challenge the big chain. He uh, opens you know what? It the in... best revenge is success. Yeah. Yes. So he opens it in Itaewon uh, and then hires like the misfit crew. Uh, oh, so bad news bears. So he's got another ex-con who is who is uh, the the assistant chef. Uh, there's a trans woman who's the main chef. Uh, and then he hires a, a black uh, Korean person as one of the waiters uh, whose story is is that uh their mom was Korean and the dad was, I can't G. remember. I, yeah. It was a country in Africa. Okay. Um, uh, and, and he, but he speaks fluent Korean. He's Korean by birth. Sure. Uh, and so he's, he's fighting that battle. Uh, you know, the trans chef story, you can, you can already imagine what battles they're fighting. Oh, uh, wow. So yeah. it's, it's that. Yeah. And so they're all banding together to you know defeat their own demons and also bring down the big pub oh that is awesome well that's so cool uh i don't know tom i think i think we've done it i think that we've uh, <laughs> this is this is everybody follow tom Merritt. find the daily tech news show on twitch at good day internet uh, or DTNS show Twitter on Twitter or DTNS picks PIX on Instagram and at daily tech news show on TikTok. And Tom Merritt, you are fascinating. Uh, maybe we'll go for Korean food uh, because great. you are clearly right there in Los Angeles. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, I'm always looking because, you know, the greatest thing about uh, when you go out for, for big table food is you can order more stuff if there's more people. Yeah. And sure. then taste everything. So thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you for having me, Jackie. This is super fun. And Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?